Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Well, everyone's a special guest. I'm joined by Mr. Elijah Griffin Sr. Yo, yo, yo. Now, if you have been a listener of the podcast, you've known that I've had this great gentleman on my podcast earlier a while ago to talk about the scholarship that he named after his mother. And I'll I'll put that old episode in the show notes so that you can go back and check that out. I think that was like three years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. So for those that don't know, you give a brief introduction of who you are. Uh, My name is Elijah Griffin. I am a professional photographer. I specialize in sports and um, a lot of other things dealing with photography. I love shooting. Um, I also run a nonprofit, um, Deborah Denise Smith Foundation. Um, in uh, honor of my mother, we give away uh, scholarships and just do things for the communities, uh, things impacting, um, you know, black and brown communities around uh, Alexandria and surrounding areas. Man, Renaissance man, honestly, yeah, uh, you can do everything. Uh, if you can't tell, because we're sitting down, you're like six something, you're tall, you can play basketball, you can do everything. I but- used to be able to play basketball. Disclaimer: I'm be forty in a couple months. There and, it is. Uh, it's, uh, it's rough. Man, just hit the uh, MJ like fade away where you just really don't move and you, you kind of limp. I take skill. And pass, about, mm-hmm. pass the ball. Yeah. So a lot has transpired. You know, I think what we're going to talk about is mainly kind of an update on what's going on. And then also, I think while we were developing this about professional development, because I, I look up to you, uh, I think, and, and we we're both motivating each other. But I think we done pre-pandemic. I think that episode mm-hmm. we did was a while ago. So that was a while let, ago. let's talk about some updates. Lot, like, yeah. what has happened in the life of <laughs> of Grip in uh, two years? Man, three years. I don't oh know. man, yeah. So that we did that. Yeah, that was like 2019. I want to say mm-hmm. we're in 2022. My kids have gotten bigger. They're huge. You know what I mean? Uh, two kids, girl and a boy. I've uh, basically expanded my business to be more of a um more of a more than just photography video Mm -hmm. editing whatever and i have been able to work um you know with some companies on on various projects and currently working on one right now that i'm very excited about um Really don't want to share that. Yeah, that's it, that, that's tweet. That's yeah. teasers. We'll keep yeah. in touch until we until we get that going on. But yeah, other than that, man, just just working, trying to build my business up. And I love it. And I think that's a good transition because I think before we came on here, you were talking about yo, I'm turning forty, milestone mm-hmm. year, and you were talking about like where I should be at forty yeah. and like this. So, like, just you know, like this is this is a live show. You share what you're comfortable with, but like, yeah. share with the listeners this thought about like what you were talking about before we were going to record today about, yeah. like, we put benchmarks on mm-hmm. where you should be at in different ages. You know, yeah, yeah, talk yeah, about that real yeah. quick. So, so when we live in you know age where you know we got social media is very prevalent and 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 everything is is online. Like you you showcase who you are, what I'm doing, and and people think that if you don't put up things that you're not really doing anything because everybody shares their good news, you know what I mean? Oh, I did this, I did that. And so when you reach an age, or, or I'm nearing 40 in a couple months, uh, you look back and, and sometimes you can peek over at, at, at somebody else who's much younger and say, man, if I would have done that at that age, mm-hmm. by now I would have this, 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 and that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, when I, you know, when we were getting ready for this, I, I shared some things with you because um, it's like an evaluation mm-hmm. of yourself. I mean, it's not really, oh, uh, this person did this, and that's the reason why I'm not where I need to be. No, that's that's not the case. It's more of a self evaluation. You, you you think about the things that you missed out on. But at the same time, what do I have to do moving forward mm-hmm. to reach my goals? Because I definitely still have goals. I mean, you know, I, I talk to, to people all the time and they're like, man, you've done this, this and that. 
Mm -hmm. You know, you should be proud of that. And I am. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I I still have so much I want to do. You know, I want to do. I want to I want to, you know, grow and, and travel and, you know, do some things and and things that I haven't done. And so it it could be a little I don't want to say depression because I want to put. You don't want to magnify it. Yeah, I want to magnify that. But I, I, I think that it could be anxiety inducing to think about things that you want and haven't obtained and you mm-hmm. you know you can get that feeling like well i should have been there i should have done this maybe that's my you know this person got it why haven't i got there and that's that's i mean that, that's just the reality of being a human being and 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 wanting things i mean whether right or wrong that's you know, I feel like that sometimes. No, I mean, I totally get that because, you know, obviously you're closer to 40. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be 40 in three years. And uh, I think that we are both in a generation where, as you said earlier, that social media does, we were kind of in the middle. So my measuring stick sometimes is not necessarily like social media as much as it is with the young people. Yeah. But concurrently, I still think I have a measuring stick with the circles of people I'm in. True. So I see people that are nearing 40 and they're, you know, maybe let's say they're a director or they're, mm-hmm. they're, they have a PhD already yep. or they have this. Mm-hmm. And it's so hard uh, to not use them as their measuring, measuring stick mm-hmm. uh, because, as you said earlier, there's people that look up to you mm-hmm. and you're probably doing things that near – uh, 40 that they mm. they're at 45 which they could do yeah but i don't know i i, I totally resonated with mm-hmm. with that said and i i don't have this expression of like it's easier for us to tell other people like don't compare yeah don't do this yeah but yeah, I, I still feel it oh absolutely and so it's so when i don't really give advice to people yeah <laughs> i do because <laughs> let me tell you why because because yeah. uh you know we're all different and and we can go through the same situation and and it impact us in a different way. And I was you know explaining to my wife the other day, I was saying that just as, as a black man, yes, right, like black men don't all have the same black experience. You know what I mean? We share some yes. similarities, but they are we yeah. are different human beings, and we are emotionally and physically and all that different than the next person. And so my experience with a situation might be totally the opposite of what somebody else is feeling. So when I'm giving advice as a, as a man or, you know, a mentor or, or, you know, talking to people, I always say, this is what I went through or am going through. And this is how I handled that. Not saying you should do it like that. I'm just saying Mm -hmm. that this was my experience and, this is this is what I would have done, and and that hasn't always been the case. I used to be a guy who like, man, if you don't do it this way, I'm not mess with you. And that's that's crazy because at the end of the day, is that person has got to walk through it on their own. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. then now it's the opposite. Like I have a yeah. job and giving advice. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> you your know, job. Exactly. That's my job. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. But at the same time, you know, obviously, I know that there's those that have that are ahead of you mm-hmm. that say, um, listen, grip, you know, mm-hmm. I'm 50 yeah. and you know, I don't have these benchmarks. Yeah. And so have you had that? Have you had that thoroughly challenged? Like in this, like you were yeah. having these thoughts today, yeah. but mm-hmm. have you had that challenge of someone that was older than you saying like chill, like, um, you know, the, the self expectations that you mm-hmm. have of yourself is way more critical and you need to like, chill on that yeah so even even that thought i mean just think about it like i could be a really really motivated person and don't want to still be in the same space like i don't want to be in a situation where i'm like yeah just because somebody else who's older than me hasn't reached a level or or you know hasn't knocked a goal that i've already knocked off does not mean that i need to chill maybe i need to go harder Mm. Because maybe what, you know, I'm meant to do, you know, I can attain that faster. And like I was telling you, my mom used to always say to me, you know, um, early on, she used to tell me that when you don't reach your potential, it impacts everybody around you. 
And I didn't know what that meant when she said it until I went through it. And so I carry that burden like, you know, if I don't reach this goal faster, it impacts my family. It impacts my my wife, my my kids, my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody around, even my friends, because I reach my goal. I uh, become the man that I'm supposed to be in career, whatever, whatever. career or whatever. whatever. Um, that could be motivation to somebody else or I'm in a position to help somebody else mm -hmm. reach their goals. But if I'm still working on myself and haven't reached that height, I don't have the ability to help somebody else. And uh, it's weird because then yeah. it's like almost like you put responsibility yeah. on your actions, but the responsibilities of your own actions don't just ref affect you; mm -hmm. they affect others. Which absolutely. concurrently, you know, absolutely, it's just like because you need to do things for yeah. yourself, but you understand that the yeah. things you do for yourself have a cause of, cause and effect on others. Yep. I don't know, because that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. But that's, a, that's a lot of pressure for day-to-day -day pressure. That's yeah. a lot of day for long-term goal yeah. pressure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I can't even give it, like, I'm not giving advice because I think concurrently I feel yeah. that a lot too, right? Um, because you'll say, if I elevate to this, then I have more money. The more money, my kids benefit. Mm -hmm. That's one example. Or I reach this, and you just say, like, let's say it's advancing to get at a doctorate. Mm -hmm. Well, not even just access to uh, having a doctorate, but then that's enough for my son to see me complete something yeah. and they think they can get it too. Yeah. So it's like these double things. Yeah. But we, then how much does that, like because of that future focus or that focus externally on how it affects others makes what I think about your individual journey, like muddled in not being mindful and then also muddled in like not being satisfied. Yeah. Cause like then you're always worrying about like, you know, like mm -hmm. these other facets of yeah. people around you that, it makes what you're doing not fun sometimes. Man, hmm. I thought that this morning. Right? That, that exact thought. That exact, you know, worrying about how this effect, like, yeah. affects everybody instead of, like, enjoying where I am, yeah. you know, in it. Yeah, and, and that's something I struggle with. Uh, I mean, it's be, a lie. Yeah, to be honest. That's, that's definitely something I struggle with because is there times where I would say, man, I should be doing that. Or I want to do that, and because of whatever factors, I say I can't do that because this is gonna, you know what I mean. I, I need to do th this because this this helps everybody and not just me type mm -hmm. thing. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so we signed up. Something you said earlier, you know, when you said put that put pressure on ourselves. Yeah, we put pressure on ourselves, but we signed up for it. We got married. Yeah. Yeah. We we had kids, right? Yes. That's, that's Choice. That, like, cho yeah, we meaningful we had kids. Meaning, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, yeah, We meaningful yeah. had kids. We wanted we, to yeah, have we kids. we wanted to have kids. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, I mean, that's that's pressure. I mean, that's a lot of pressure to be, mm -hmm. you know, folks. Because now you have people that depend on you. Yep. You know what I mean? When you're by yourself, you know, if you're not married and don't have any kids, you know, the pressure of being, like, you know, the man that you need to be. I mean, yeah, but not as, as, as I want to say, not as, as hard it is when you have a family and you have yeah. people dependent on you. And I, so. I was thinking, because I was talking to Hillard earlier today, mm -hmm. and we said this too, uh, in, your, in your existence comes responsibility. Yeah. And the thing, that quote that we thought about was like, remember when Charles Barkley was like, I don't want to be no one's role model? Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, well, you are. You are. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Like, yeah. that's also concurrently with that pressure, too, yeah. because mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't sign up to do X, yeah. Y, and Z. But as I chase goals and dreams, mm -hmm. a, a what's it called, a natural byproduct is that you become responsible you become for respons people. Absolutely. For people, sometimes you don't yeah. even know. Like, like, oh, as I chase, let's say you chase your goals to be, you know, a promotion, mm -hmm. you, by happenstance, you sign, like, by just, or not even talking to people, you become a unofficial role model, which you're like, I didn't sign up for that, mm -hmm. but I think it kind of aligns with it. It's like yeah. my individual actions mm -hmm. by happenstance yeah. gives responsibilities. Yeah, it's, it's funny because Charles Barkley uh, explained that. I saw somewhere the guy asked him, you know, what did you mean by that? And basically what he was saying is your role model should be your parents, you know, should be your teachers, should be people that you interact with. 
uh, you know, every day. It's like, mm. I just dribble a basketball. Like, I get paid to dribble a basketball. I get paid to play a game. And so if I'm your role model, like, something's wrong. Like, yeah, you can want to, you know, you like me and I'm your favorite athlete, but I shouldn't be your role model, you know, because I don't really affect what you do on day to day. Your parents do, your teachers and, and all that. And that's basically what he said when he said I think, that. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think he meant, and yeah. I, I can get yeah. that. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, words matter. Yeah. I think maybe, but still unofficially, um, I would I would re- retort that because mm-hmm. he wasn't just a normal person dribbling a basketball. Yeah. He's a person that has obtained a high level of yeah. success with basketball. Yeah. Meaning, even when you chase excellence mm-hmm. and the excellence that you chase is not related to what they do, mm-hmm. you unofficially become a role model. Yeah. So for instance, not day to day, let's say I get this doctorate or I become a doctor, right? Mm-hmm. There might be a person that has no desire to reach that level of education but the values of hard work or education or setting your mindset on a goal mm-hmm. unofficially still makes you a role model. Yeah, I'm sure. not just some guy that writes, you know, writes or grades papers yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. So with Charles Barkley, I think he has to understand is that mm-hmm. I think regardless of the role, regardless of the function, mm-hmm. I think you unofficially become a role model when you check chase excellence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you chase something of a high performance or a high status or high level of success Mm -hmm. so like if you was just you know an unknown basketball player that doesn't affect a platform that Mm -hmm. doesn't matter but when you see a professional athlete Mm -hmm. regardless if he's naturally gifted regardless if you don't know if you practice or not you can tell like he is unofficially a role model because they've reached levels Mm -hmm. that normal people don't reach that's true that's what i mean no he's not a normal basketball player yeah so i think i think that that would be my caveat to that he said that he said he was young when he made that statement he said Mm -hmm. as he got older he realized that you know his actions have consequences and Mm -hmm. and 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 his words and different things so he actually agreed with Mm -hmm. what you're saying right now so i mean that comes with growth and i think it also comes with this because as we're saying you individually saying, I have these benchmarks. Mm-hmm. I think it is that, I think now, it's more so that you already have the awareness, regard, like the, you have the awareness that Charles Barkley don't have. Mm-hmm. The awareness that you have is that, I feel like I should be here because mm-hmm. if I'm here as a, a, a individual role model to people I know or don't mm-hmm. know, they could use that. Yeah, for sure. They, or you know, People can use that, people mm-hmm. I don't know can use that. But at the same time, I will go back to it though, is, is that, does that corrupt or de- uh, not corrupt? You know what I meant. Like, does that lessen the journey? Because yeah. we've had stories. There's multiple oh, yeah. stories where people have reached things in their fifties or sixties, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and I think certain times, certain things don't have a traditional benchmark. Yeah. Like, I don't know where we. I think it's societal, or we think we should hit things at 30, 20, 40, yeah. half your life. Then yeah. you like stop working. And we had these natural benchmarks that we place on these ourselves yeah. based on I should be here in my twenties. I should I should finish college by twenty two because mm-hmm. you you know you graduate at eighteen. But does that lessen when someone else graduates college Mm-mm. at fifty and they they still unofficially motivate Mm-mm. someone like you know the grandma that did it Mm-mm. that motivates a whole generation. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. So I you know I saw something that said that start that degree no matter. You know, people say, oh, I'll be 45 in four years. I don't want to be, you know, and it's like, yeah, you're going to be 45 in four years anyway. So might might (laughs) be 45 with a degree working towards, you know, a goal. So when you look at it like that, it's like, yeah, why put an age on something when really, you know, you're doing it to better yourself. You know what I'm saying? Better the people around you. I I would also, but you know, this is where I'm agree sometimes too is that maybe we put these benchmarks and you said this earlier it's like maybe we put these benchmarks particularly for your age at 40 because um it's a window in time where like you were already thinking like my kids are young Mm -hmm. so if i go hard now i can go harder i mean i go as hard later Mm -hmm. i have residual like the things that i did really hard my young years carry over yeah i think that added a difference i think if you were 40 with no kids Mm -hmm. i don't think you would feel the same oh i wouldn't not at all. I don't think you would feel oh, the same way about this benchmark. Oh, not at all. Oh, man. 40. 
With no kids. Yeah, there's no benchmark. I already I don't know. told you. I'd be balling right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, because, like, like, with no responsive, like, when I say responsibilities, no, like, yeah. responsibilities of humans. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have these humans you have to take care of. You know what I mean? And I, and I, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's an honor to do it, you know, but you reflect a lot when you're, you know, when you have people to take care of, you, you know, it's, it's, your choices are different. You know, oh, you definitely that, move yeah, different. You move totally different than when it's just you. But see, I don't know if I, see, I'm quite the opposite. I don't think I'd be balling if I had no kids. Because mm. uh, for me, particularly, having Miles and Bennett mm. was an accelerant for me to like Ooh, get my ass nice. to get, get myself together. Yeah. Meaning like, I was like, I got no, you know, I got, you know, I was like, I was okay with a mediocrity or yeah. mediocrity. And then I have kids. I'm like, oh gosh, like yeah, me, being I'm mediocre like, yeah. is not good enough for kids. It's, like it's one, it's not mediocre in a career. Yeah. I want to have more yeah. money and yeah. stuff, but it's also not mediocre as an example. <laughs> like I don't want to live yeah. and be a mediocre person, yeah. and then my kids see a mediocre adult. Yeah. You know, like, no, I got you. So that was a accelerant. So I don't know. I think I would have been totally different. So that's that's my. Um, that's the reason why I feel the way I feel. You know, with. 40 coming up like man you know because I feel like you know I could do more for my kids I could do more for my wife I could do more for you know what I'm saying the people around me mm -hmm. you know because you know that's just the type of person that my mom raised you know what I'm saying that's yeah. just that's just you know who she was you know and my dad before that you know um, it's uh, yeah it's it's weird um, to have that type of, you know, when you all, when you con subconsciously always thinking about how this affects other people. You know yes. Mean? It's yeah. literally 360 miles yeah, in your yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. So like you, you, I think what comes with awareness, awareness mm -hmm. and one, not being narcissistic, narcissistic mm -hmm. could be the opposite where they, and that's the key word is narcissist mm -hmm. is like, you're just inert is that you don't see causal and effect of others in your actions. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what a narcissist is. Yeah. But someone that is actually, emotionally intelligent mm -hmm. and also attuned it it that's where empaths you know right? you like realize that my actions affect others yeah and so now you're like almost parallel decisioning right mm -hmm. like you don't just like if this then this to me you're mm -hmm. like if this then this to me and then if this then this to this person concurrently at the same time exactly two heads yep and that could be very hard i think mm -hmm. that's what all parents i think that's what working parents feel like yeah <laughs> right like yeah, for sure. like and so, I don't know what we calling this, man. I'm still calling Chasing Your Dreams. Yeah. I don't know, but it's just like, this is the ever-evolving. We're not going to have an answer for this. Yeah, no. We're not going to have an answer. I think it's just out outwardly processing. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing I would say outwardly, though, is that, uh, and I, you know, I listen to music, is how do, when we chase our dreams or we chase our goals or we say, I should be at this, mm -hmm. this, which, when does it cross over from being a healthy thought, mm -hmm. right? Like a... It's still, yeah. I should be doing this by 40. Yeah. Can't worry about it. I got, you know, I got mm -hmm. new goals. I'm going hard. Or is it like, I should have been doing this by 40 so much that it's, uh, it's, it doesn't fuel you. It actually reverses and, and does damage. Depends on who the person is and how their mindset and, yeah. and, you know, I mean, we're not, we're not the same person every single day. Some days we have a good day. Some days we have mm -hmm. a bad day. Some days, you know, I, you know, I let stuff like that uh, affect, you know, how I am that day. Um, but I eventually snap out of it. You know what I mean? When I think about, you know, the good, when I think about what I could be doing, you know what I mean? What I could be, could not have this family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could be, you know, a lot less, you know, well off. I could not have you know people that love me um so when you when you just sit back and you know think about the the good things and be grateful for what you have it's easier to say yeah you can have these goals but look i'm i am you know i'm grateful for what i have right here and i just want to you know do this this and that so mm -hmm. one of my random questions because mm -hmm. you know is then now that you know you should be doing this by forty and doing this by forty, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to happen. You're turning forty. Are you gonna Are you gonna have a different outlook on 
what I should be doing by 50. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like yes. now 40, you're already, it's already gone. 40 is gone. You're being 40. So are you going to have this shift where I should be doing this by 50 now? No. So 40 wasn't the benchmark. The bench, just okay. 40 came up. You okay, know, 40, 40, 40 is here. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're like, whoa, oh, man. Wow, I'm, I'm 40 now. So, man, I wish I would have done X, Y, Z. And that's not thought. It wasn't. It was never by forty. I'm going to do this. Okay, by got it. Thirty. No, 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 yeah. no. I didn't. I didn't think of it like that. And so, no. Well, maybe because now that it's, it's, it's fresh. Like, man, you know, I need to set some year, five year, ten year goals. You know what I mean? That aligns and then maybe even down. Number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, um, I can say, yeah, by fifty, I want to. You know, this, this, and that. I want to do this, this, and that. But I, you know, it's all positive. You know, yeah, of course. And 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 having goals and and setting setting dates for yourself, man. That's that that doesn't that that could be positive. It's not really a negative. Um, I think the negative that could come out of it is like, you know, not enjoying where you're at, not enjoying the process, not, you know. Mm. Not you know being thankful and grateful for you know saying what you have, and point. so yeah. So I mean, it's just like I said, it's 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 all about perspective. You know what I mean? Glass half full, glass half empty. Or Dasani, or or or, 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 or Dasani can, can water. That's yeah. Dasani can water. That's like quarter ridiculous. full. That doesn't. So so what type? What are you? I don't have any. I don't have any benchmarks toward ages either. Yeah. I think I do now. I think I'm I'm more flexible as in uh as i've done you know the things i've done the vision boards and mm-hmm. i i have became i become still more micro and micro at the same time so i definitely have things i want to hit by the end of 2022 mm-hmm. within right in front of my face what's going on but i definitely have some in five years i like this and 10 years i like that mm-hmm. um but i never aligned it with i should have been doing this by 40 or 50 so i have not put my benchmarks on myself on the societal 30, 40, 50, whatever. Mm -hmm. But concurrently though, I am, I'm setting standards for myself for those increments of year, five, 10, Mm -hmm. so on. And I just like even numbers because I was like weird, like, oh, I have three-year goals or 11. I'm like, who does that? (laughs) Like, so I think there is a system to that that feels good. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned by doing, um, Focusing on the macro at concurrently with the five year goals mm-hmm. is that um, I'm still the, I, I've I've not been I've, it's easier it's elevated when I don't hit ten for ten. Yep. So I, I like to see like oh at the end of the year I like doing this this and this, mm-hmm. and if at the end of the year I only do like three out of ten, I'm like that's not what I really wanted. I want to do more than that. Mm-hmm. But if I'm like hitting seven out of 10, yeah. a majority of it in regards to, um, not just also different facets of my life traveling, like not just one yeah. length of diversity of goals, yeah. I feel better about it. And I'm, I'm getting to that point too. So I think this is a helpful thing to think about. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll be 40, but I don't think I'm not really going to put a benchmark on 40. Yeah. I think I'm still going to put benchmarks on this year. Yeah. Five years. Five years, ten years. Ten yeah, years. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's just because I want to have structure. I want to have something to chase. Mm-hmm. I want to have some systemic things that I want to do. But I also don't want to have my goals be um, measured on societal, you should be doing this by this certain age. Yeah. They're more so like the five years and all that is for me. And mm-hmm. it's also for just my individual goal setting yeah. and goal planning. Yeah, so I don't know. One thing to think about, and uh, you know, this is what we what we doing. Just keep on talking. All right, cool. Um, but what I want to think about is I'm thinking out loud. We're gonna go into our new part, shot for shot. So with that, I'm gonna ask Grip a random question. We're gonna about to wrap up real quick. Um, I think before we do shout outs and plugs. So okay, so. Uh, I don't know. We got cutting that out? Or we yeah, we're good. Going? All right. So this is our last part because we got almost 3 o'clock. Um, so shot for shot. You ask a random question. I ask a random question before we wrap up today. Mm-hmm. You go first. All right. So we discussed this earlier. Uh, is Kenneth Lamar 
a musical genius, why or why not? Ooh, now you want to put me on the spot on on the audio? Yeah, but yeah, that's so that's a good random question. So yeah, that is a good random question. So when I think of like um, geniuses, I think of people that have um, they come up with um, like what they do we haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They they have such a big cultural impact that it lasts, you know, for generations. You know, I think of people like Stevie Wonder. Like I said, I think of Prince. Um, and so I, I consider those geniuses. They are self-contained. They can get into the studio and they can make an album on their own. Kanye West is another one of them. That might be a little controversial now, but Kanye yeah. West is a musical genius. Kanye West sees things that, you know, you or I don't see. And um, th- that's what makes him, you know, so controversial, you know, at, at times. And so when it comes to Kendrick Lamar, I, I really, like, I'm Kendrick Raw is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, I listen to all his albums. I, I really enjoy the new album. Um, it's uh, put together... Um, great production is awesome I mean and and one thing about the album is it he changed the way even the producers who did the album mm. how they mm. did produce like so Pharrell Pharrell did a couple songs on there those are not typical Pharrell songs there was no dancing there was no you know him you know singing it was just straight you know, raw, mm-hmm. and and Pharrell knew, you know, because of the type of person Kendrick Lamar is, that he didn't want the whole dancing thing. He wanted something real and raw, and it was it came out really, really good. And so, when you say genius, ah, genius for this generation, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Like he's very, very smart. Very you know? smart. Like it's yeah. like it's almost saying is there yeah. the difference between like someone that's like. Very intelligent, mm-hmm. and someone that's just like a legit genius. So, um, on first take yesterday, they were discussing people, and so it came up, who would you rather have? And Stephen A. said that he wants people to understand is, if I praise this person, it's not a slight on the next person. And gotcha. so that's where I am with it. Gotcha. Like, I'm that's- not saying that this person is not great and thing. I just prefer, you yeah. know, when preferences does yeah, not preference. mean yeah. worth, right? No, 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 exactly. Okay, so, hmm, yeah, that's a good one, man. All right, what's your yeah. question for me? What is my question, man? So, if you had, um, you know, the ability to, um, and resources to do whatever you want, what would you do to impact uh, the people around you? Uh. Dang, that's deep. So if I had a lot of money, I could do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, definitely, I love the the focus that you do on education. Mm-hmm. I would love to make education accessible, like where it's like anyone that wanted to go to school can go yep. to school. That yep. would be like if I had that resource, like mm-hmm. uh, whether it was my own school or whatever, and like that would be probably one of my things. It'd be like some form or fashion mm-hmm. with impact and resources are not an issue. It would be something around education, like either free school or you teach it or you learn it mm-hmm. and everyone can learn something or yeah. they were like hey Philip it had to be like too if they came to me like if I had unlimited resources mm-hmm. that it had to have a tangible outcome to them learning something like yep. hey Philip uh, I want to learn how to use computers and I could just be like boom yep. with all my resources you learn the computers I want to do this boom you could do that mm-hmm. and then they had to prove it like it's not like me just giving people money. Yeah. Like, it'd be like that mindset with endless resources. I can mm-hmm. give them access. Like I could teach a man to fish yep. for themselves. Yeah. And they're not just getting money out of me, you know? Like, or, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then also then it would also have impact because then maybe they can teach someone else. Um, so if I had like no resources, it'd be like my own college. I don't know. It'd be like something like where it was like everyone got the access to a learning thing that they mm-hmm. want to learn. Thus, they could teach someone else, and that would be the way they pay it forward. Yeah. Rather than just with impact, just giving people money. Yeah. No. So I, I ask you that because, um, I would absolutely do what you said to be able to give people access to things. Oh, you want to be this? Oh, I know somebody. 
damn, let me put you in contact with them. You know, whatever it is you need, you know, equipment, this and that, I'll take care of it. But all you have to do is show up and be ready to learn. Okay, That's it. cool. And also, I put, I would, with that resources and impact, the main point is mm -hmm. they still got to do themselves. They still got to buy in. Yeah. And I'm not just giving out handouts. No, no, no. You know no what I'm saying? Handouts. It's like, no, no. it'd be like, I no. give them the access. You give them to the access, it. yeah. And they and if and they could change their life, yeah. and I would still feel good that I gave mm -hmm. them the access. If they wasted it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel no type of way because mm -hmm. I was like, that wasn't the barrier. Yeah. My part was giving them at least a chance. Yeah. So my my thing is, I want to, because when I look back on me as a photographer and and saying, man, if I'd have started when I was a teenager, well, the funny thing is, I always knew I wanted to be a photographer. I just didn't think I could make a living out of it. And so people told me, oh, go to college and be this and go get your accounting degree. Okay, go do this. Go, you know, get a get a nine to five and take care of your family. It's like, yeah, cool. But I wanted to be a photographer. And so um, I went all in and, and now I'm here. And so I would like to, you know, tell a young kid, or anybody like you know if this is what you want to do this is what you have these are the steps you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh take it for somebody who already went through those steps you know do that and so i think that one of one of my goals uh for the next year is to bring on an apprentice somebody that wants to actually learn and you know grow in this business so yeah that's something that i would do all right bet well, we're going to wrap up. So this is the part. you already been on my show. Mm -hmm. Shout-outs and plugs. Shout-out anyone you want to shout-out and show love to and plugs. And then we'll make sure to put that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. Shout-out to the uh, Wu-Tang Clan uh, for the Into the 36 Chambers album, one of the greatest albums of all time. Uh, shout-out to, you know, to, to everybody, man, to the people, you know, that, uh, that deal with me on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, my wife, my kids, my friends, you know. Uh, people that send me memes on Instagram, you know, throughout the day. I sent you probably a couple today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, I just I just uh love what I'm doing. Love to uh interact with people and and learn. And uh yeah, that's it. All right, well, bet. So, you know, this is it. Positive filter. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a family member or friend. If you want to leave a voicemail for the podcast, it's 571-336-6560. That's 571-336-6560. Sometimes I add those into the intro. And keep on supporting. Support my man Grip here. Mm -hmm, put his absolutely. resources, going to put his scholarship mm -hmm. link and all that into the, the show notes. And give this episode a like, review, subscribe, all those things. Positive filter. And we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends, and like the Facebook page, spreading positivity of movement. Thanks for listening.